So this is our final video for this week on the mixed logit model. And we're gonna talk about just a couple additional emp empirical considerations when you're estimating the mixed logit model uh, beyond just the, the panel data stuff that we talked about in the last video. And the first thing to talk about here, we haven't actually talked about how do we estimate this thing. Uh, and so let's talk about that now. So one of the big highlights of, of kind of the, I guess it was the second video this week is that mixed logit choice probabilities do not have a closed form expression. Here we've put in, we've plugged in linear representative utility to simplify things a little bit, but still there is, there is no way we can simplify this expression beyond this in general. And so we've got this integral that needs to be calculated in order to, uh, in order to know choice probabilities. And so you might think, well, we can estimate this thing just like we estimated logit, nested logit, whatever. Uh, we just have this, this new formula for choice probabilities. And in some sense, you're right. In theory, that's what we could do, except this choice probability does not have a closed form expression. We are not going to be able to calculate it directly. And so we're not gonna be able to use maximum likelihood estimation or even GMM in kind of the ways we did in the past. Instead, what we're gonna to have to do here is approximate this choice probability through numerical simulation. We're gonna numerically simulate what this integral looks like use that to approximate our choice probability. From there, we can calculate a simulated log likelihood function and then use that simulated log likelihood to estimate our model using maximum simulated likelihood. And so I've used the word simulated a lot here because this is gonna be considered a simulation-based estimation method. And that's what we're gonna talk about next week. But for this week, let's just acknowledge that estimating this model is going to be more complex. It's going to require simulation. But thankfully for us, R in the mlogit function in R is going to be able to do this for us. So uh, for now, we can just take it as given that, that the mlogit function is doing the right thing. And we're going to use it to estimate these parameters. Uh, the parameters of a mixed logit model. And then next week, we're going to talk about the actual simulation-based estimation method itself and, and understand what's going on. But for this week, we're going to stick to the mlogit package in R and, and use that to, uh, to estimate these models for us. The other thing I want to point out here is that oftentimes you will see these discrete choice models estimated using market level data. We talked about this for, for logit and nested logit, so I want to talk about it for mixed logit also. Uh, an example, classic example, is that you observe the price, market share, and characteristics of every cereal brand at the grocery store, and you want to estimate the structural parameters of consumer decision making that explain those purchases. Great. Just as with the logit and nested logit model, when we think about observing lots of consumers making, you know, facing the same set of choices, the same set of alternatives and data, and we aggregate over those, then our choice probabilities actually become market shares. And so we could think about if we're in that setting, then the market share for any alternative, any particular serial here is going to take on this, this, this format the the mixed logit choice probability or in this case we could think of it as like a mixed logit market share expression one of the things that was nice about the logit and nested logit models is we could do a little math here things would cancel out and we could express this in a linear way that could be estimated with ols we never actually did that estimation ourselves but in each of those each of those kind of lecture videos we had uh, I at least pointed out that it could be done if you had market level data um, and, and we didn't do it because it's actually a, a pretty simple just OLS regression that you can run. And we all know how to do that already. But because of this integral here, uh, nothing's going to cancel out. If we try to do some math comparing two different alternatives to one another, nothing's going to cancel out here. This will not reduce down to a linear model that could use OLS like it did for logit and nested logit. And so we're going to have to do something more complex to estimate this, even with this aggregated market level data. Oftentimes, uh, some, instrument, uh, some instruments are needed here to deal with endogeneity. And so uh, there's this kind of classic demand estimation using random coefficients logit. 
the kind of method that's classically used here is called BLP, following on a paper of Barry Levinson and Pacus. Uh, we will talk about BLP estimation in the final week of the semester. We're gonna do a, a very cursory uh, discussion of it, but we will talk about it a little bit just because it is so common. I wanna make sure you get some, some coverage of that, of that topic. Um, but but the, the, the big upshot here is that even with market level data, the mixed logit model is difficult to estimate. So that's all I've got on the mixed logit model, kind of the, the, the more theoretical side of stuff. This week in class, we will work through an example where we use the M logit package to estimate uh, a mixed logit model.